And welcome to Projection. And my name is Drew. Um, if you're not familiar with me, I would invite you to check out some of the other videos I've done or the website. So I wanted to start off with this very, I put a lot of time, a lot of effort into this uh, diagram that I think will be super helpful for understanding projection. So, so here, here it is. <laughs> right? High tech right here. So if we're talking about projection, I'm going to use the, the actual projector as a reference point. So this is the projector, right? And a projector is composed essentially of a, of a light or a light bulb, right? That's shining through the film reel, or really it's just the scenes. And then essentially the light shining through the, the film or the scenes comes out of and then up onto the screen. That's, that's my high tech in-depth understanding and diagram. <laughs> uh, so why does that matter? Who gives a shit? Okay, I'm glad you asked. So, so when it comes to us as human beings, you know, some people will tell you you're the light or you're a light or you have a bright light, or you're very brilliant. You know? and, and a lot of that is just a description of like, you know, how we emanate or how we radiate. And so when we say that a person is projecting, what we're talking about is like, okay, the light that I am is shining through the experiences, you know, as a kid or you know, really at any point in my life that I'm holding on to. A lot of which are potentially not dealt with or processed, right? So they stay with us and they become part of our wheel. Right? And then they get projected out onto the world. I mean, a really cool concept to think about is that we think that there's one world and there's like 8 billion people's beings, right? But we could also consider that there's potentially 8 billion worlds, right? That everyone has their own stuff, their own experiences, their own biases and imprints and early learnings and conditioned, you know, behaviors and blind spots. And then that's being projected out onto the world. So 8 billion people all interacting with each other, but potentially all living in their own world, their own like, world bubble. This is also how some folks might talk about, like you create your own reality, right? And people would be like, oh, what do you mean? I don't create my own reality. Like, that's the wall, this is the chair, this is my car, I go to work, you know. It's like, okay, it's, you know, slow down, tough guy. <laughs> like, cool, right? Yeah, like these things are there, but the meaning potentially that we ascribe to something or how we see something or how we value stuff or how we connect everything together, that's part of our film. That's part of our stuff that then has us each individually creating different worlds. We're creating a story here and then projecting out. So, you know, two guys have the same car. One guy, you know, was homeless and didn't have anything for years. So this guy didn't have anything, now all of a sudden he's got this, you know, 1987 cabriolet or something, I don't know, right? And then this other guy who like came for money and is well-to-do and like fell in hard times and now he's got the same vehicle, like they have the same car, but the way in which they see it, the value they put on it, the way in which they understand it and what it means about them, right? Totally different. So in each of those situations, the backdrop or the screen is the same, but the movie that's being projected is different. But we can take it, you know, to the to the depth of our being, or we'll say to the beginning of this you know, particular incarnation, maybe. You know, when you're three, four, five, six, there are experiences that are happening that are forming and shaping who we think we are, what we think the world is, what kind of place the world is, what the rules are, right? and that all forms and shapes our, our film essentially and then becomes the world that we then go live in you know, moving forward. So like if I grew up in a neighborhood where there was only, you know, fluorescent people and the polka dot people were like, oh, we don't know about them people, you know, and we didn't interact with them, then that's an imprint on my film, right? And so then anytime I might interact with a polka dot person, I'm gonna bring, you know, particular stereotypes or, you know, biases or whatever it is, assumptions that have nothing to do with the external world or, you know, the actual person or the place and everything to do with my own learning, my own film, right? That's then being projected out on the world. I mean, this is the wild part is that we have our own stuff and then we project it out on the world and then we go and like play in the world, but also in our stuff. 
and then shit gets weird because the world isn't necessarily our stuff, right? So all different ways in which we take what we got in here, in our own film, and then we project it out on the world, and then begin to interact with our projections as much or more so than the world itself. Yeah, life itself is very like open and spacious. And it has its own rhythms and flow and like natural beauty to it. Um, but most of the time we're not really in tune with that or in touch with that or really paying attention to that. Most of the time we're like engrossed in our projections on it. Right? It's like, uh, yeah, you're like projecting a movie on like a really beautiful, like, I don't know, piece of art or painting on a wall. Like there is natural beauty to the wall before the projection comes. So if we just shine the light, we could actually just see the beauty. But we come with all this film, you know, we're, we're programmed in a way, and, you know, depending upon what tradition or belief system you subscribe to, you know, maybe you came with extra film, you know, that has to be worked through as well. Um, yeah, so we're rarely in touch with the raw experience of life, of being life, in life, lifing, <laughs> right? So we're here, we got our film, we're shining, the, 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 the film's getting projected on the screen and there's our life and it's happening. And then, and then we do this thing where then we try to like interact with the projected life to like make things how we think they should go. Which I mean, you know, you sit here for a moment as a human, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm like doing things in my life. You know, I'm showing up to work, I'm doing this, the relationship, achieving goals, you know, being kind with myself. But when we use the projector metaphor, it becomes a little bit sillier. Like, how could, like, you know, if you go to a movie theater, imagine this, right? You're in a movie theater and the movie's being projected on the screen. And then you're like up there trying to like fight with the, with the characters in the movie or like tell them like, no, no, that's not the right line. You need to say this or you need to do that, right? Like if you start arguing with the projections in a movie theater, people are gonna think you're nuts, right? It's like, bro, what are you doing? Like, any kind of real change you would do would be like in the projector. And it's the same thing for us. As human beings, we do a lot of our like manipulating, trying to fix, trying to get out in, in the projected world, which is actually not entirely real, right? And so then how can you change the projections out there? Yeah. What we can do, though, is we can start to pay attention to the film. Right. And then we can start to change the film. We can put it in a different movie or cut the, you know, cut the scenes different, and then it'll project different. Right? So like, the real place to do the work is with the film. 